morning year seven. Today we're going to be finding the arc length and perimeter of sectors. But before we do our new work, let's revise what we were doing last lesson. So, first question says, draw and label each of the following on the circle that's given to us there. Okay, so the first one we want to draw is a diameter. So let's put in our circle a dot for the center because a diameter needs to go through the center of the circle from one side of the circle all the way through to the other. Okay, so let's put a label on that. That's the diameter. Okay, next we want a chord. A chord goes from one side of the circle to the other but does not go through the center. So there is a chord. Okay, next we want a radius, which goes from the center to the edge. So let's draw a radius down here. Next part D, we want a sector. Now a sector is the area that's been cut off by two radii. So that area in there is a sector. A tangent is a line that goes from one, touches the circle at one point. So something like that, where we draw a little dot here where it touches, and that's the tangent. And finally, the segment is the area that's cut off by the chord. So this little part in here, I'm going to label that the segment. Okay, good. So question two. We want to find the circumference of each of the following correct to one decimal place. So there is two formulas for circumference. One for when we're given the radius and one for when we have the diameter. So in the first question, from the center to the edge, that's a radius. So we will use C equals 2 pi R. Then on the second line of working, we want to substitute in that the radius is 6. So it's 2 pi times 6. And then we type that in our calculator. 2 pi times 6, and we want one decimal place. So it will be 37.7 meters. Okay, the second question goes all the way from one side through the center to the other side of the circle. That's a diameter. So we want to use C is equal to pi D. Then we sub in on the second line that the diameter is 48. Pi times 48. Third line, we type in our calculator. Pi times 48 is 150 point. We have seven nines so that will round it up to be 0.8 millimeters. Okay, so that's how we find the circumference, which is the perimeter of a whole circle. But what happens if we don't have a whole circle? What if we have a half a circle or a quarter of a circle or some other strange portion of a circle? Let's see what we can do for these. We have a table here to fill in to help us work out a new formula. So if we had 180 degree angle in a sector. So we're saying we don't have a whole circle, we have a sector which is a part of a circle like this. Now if we had 180 degrees, we would say okay well there's 360 degrees in a circle, so if we put 180 over 360 degrees we have half of a circle. That means that my arc length, which we're calling L is our symbol for arc length, is half of a normal full circle, so we have half of our pi times d. Pi times d is the circumference of a whole circle, and we have half of it, so we put the half in front. If we had a 90 degree angle, we would put the 90 over 360. Now that simplifies to a fraction of a quarter. Which means if I wanted to find the arc length, I would times a quarter by the pi d. 
If I had a 45 degree angle, I would do 45 over 360. That simplifies to one over eight. So then my arc length would be one eighth times by pi d. And we start to get the idea, we have a few more here, 30 degrees would be 30 over 360, which is 1 12th. So our arc length would be 1 over 12 times pi d. Or if it's 150, it would be 150 over 360. That simplifies to 5 twelfths. So the arc length would be equal to 5 twelfths times pi d. The point of this is, Whatever the fraction is, you always times it by pi d. So for whatever angle we're given, and in the formula, we use a Greek letter, which is theta. This symbol here is a theta. To draw it, you draw a zero with an extra loop through the center of it. That angle, whatever it is, always needs to be put over 360. And then to find the arc length, that fraction, that theta over 360, is always times by pi d. Now I've used the diameter formula, but you could also use the radius formula, which is 2 pi r. So down here, this is where we bring it all together. A circular arc is, is a portion of the circumference of a circle. Theta is a Greek letter and is used to represent the angle that the arc makes at the center of the circle. So when you see it, you'll see a line like this in the center and you'll see a number where that theta symbol is. And the L is this big arc length around here that we're trying to find how long that is. So the formula to find the arc length, there is two of them because we have two formulas for circumference. The one that we were just working on was this one. The arc length was the angle over 360 times by pi d. However, a lot more often you're actually given the radius because it's the radius that's cutting the sector into its pieces. So this form is actually probably more useful. It's theta over 360 and you times it by 2 pi r, which is our other circumference formula. Okay. Um, to go a step further, the L tells us the length of this part of our sector. But we've just been learning about perimeter and the perimeter of a shape needs to go the whole way around. So if I wanted to finish this and turn it into a perimeter question, I would need to find the arc length, but also add on these two straight sides, which are both equal to the radius. So we'll end up with another formula here. P for perimeter is theta over 360 times by 2 pi r. That was the arc length formula. But then you add on 2r to make it a perimeter. So there's two types of questions that you're going to see in the exercise that you're doing today. Some of them will say find the length of the arc and some of them will say find the perimeter. And we have that that 2r, that plus 2r on there if we want to do the perimeter. So question number one says find the length of the arc. So we're using the first formulas. And the formula for arc length was L equals theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, now we're looking at my picture that I have here. The theta is the angle. It will be the 50 degrees. The radius will be the 10 centimeters. So this, this dot here would be the center of my circle, which means that 10 is going to the edge, making it a radius. So subbing into my formula, I will have 50 over 360 times by 2 pi times 10, because the radius is 10. So like the other formulas that we were doing, these will always have three lines of working out, formula, substitution, answer. So let's type this in, 50 over 360 times 2 pi times 10. And we want two decimal places, so this will be 8.73.
centimetres. Question two, now the dark line around here is the one that we're trying to find the arc length of. So we want L for arc length equals theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, this time the angle is 225. So I do 225 over 360 times by, and the radius will be 16. So 2 pi times 16. Type it into the calculator. is 62.83 centimetres. Question two says find the perimeter, which means instead of it being L for arc length, we want P for perimeter equals theta over 360 times 2 pi R, that's the arc length, but then we have to go plus 2 R to add, to fill it in to do the whole perimeter. So subbing into that, this um, right angle symbol means that that's a 90 degree angle. So we have 90 over 360 times 2 pi times my radius, which is 3. Then I have to go plus 2 lots of my radius, so 2 times 3. Type that into the calculator. 90 over 360 times 2 pi times 3 plus two times three is 10.7 because we're doing one decimal place again. Let's do that again. For part B, we're finding the dark line here um, for the perimeter, and we'll close it in with these two, the two radius there. So the formula is theta over 360 times two pi r plus the two r. The angle is 120 over 360 times by 2 pi times 13 is my radius and then plus 2 lots of 13. Typing it in. The one decimal place we get 52, 53.2. Okay, so that means you can go to exercise four and do pages 16 and 17.